This machine is called a UNITAS calculator. It was made by Ludwig Spitz and Co. And that is a company that was founded in 1907 by Ludwig Spitz. He used to be a lawyer and representative at various other calculator companies. And in 1907 he decided to go it alone and found his own company. And uh, he did that with the help of an engineer called Robert Ryan, who did most of the design work on these machines. It's a machine that's based on the uh, uh, arithmometer by Thomas de Colmar, and uh, that means it has a stepped drum mechanism. More about that later. But what makes this machine special as well is that it has two output registers. The normal arithmometer and other clones uh, have only one output register, and Ludwig Spitz made one of those as well. That one's called the TIM, the Time is Money. But he was most proud of this version, the UNITAS, which has two output registers. That allows for various other types of calculations. For example, just simply subtotals and to grand totals. It has an input register here, and you input with the, the help of these sliders to set the digits. And if you turn the crank, this input number gets added to the output register. I've now turned the crank uh, four times and that means the number you see here is four times this input. You can shift this whole uh, carriage to the right by one column and that allows you to add this number to the higher columns of the output register. So now I've multiplied this number by 24 and that's the result. You can also subtract, let me just shift this back, this lever here, that uh, now allows you to subtract this number from the uh, register. So now I've only multiplied it by 23 times. To clear the output, you have to use these levers here. Yeah, lift the register first and then pull this to the right. And this register here, or this lever here, that clears this register, which is the revolution counter. The input can be cleared with these levers. Uh, if you push this one down, it clears everything to the left of it. You, if you push any of these other levers down, it clears everything to the left of it. So, and this allows you to use uh, part of this input for other things. If you pu pull the, uh, lever, the clearing lever up, it clears everything to the right of it. So you can, for example, uh, use this top column by putting a, a 1 in it, and then the digits here in this output register act as a revolution counter. That'll be slightly better than this revolution counter, because this one doesn't actually do any carries. Let me show you an example. If I uh, shift this to the right once, and then put it back and subtract 1. Now I've essentially multiplied this by 9 and yeah you can see a 9 here but this revolution counter actually says a 1 and a minus 1 so it's actually 10 minus 1. The uh, The second register can also be used, uh, of course, and this knob here that I've been using, you can uh, detach it 
from here and link it up. It has a little grabbing uh, arm here. You can link it up with the top one. So now this, these two uh, carriages are uh, fixed together. They move at the same time. So So now if you uh, do a calculation, it, it'll, uh, the, yeah, the two carriages move in concert. And this lever here, for the addition and subtraction, is actually uh, is split into two parts that normally move together. So when it's moved up, they both add, both registers add. If you move it down, both registers subtract. But if you move this small lever like that to the middle, now the top register does the opposite of the bottom register. So the, it's set to add now, so the bottom register adds and this one subtracts. And if you switch it that way, the bottom register subtracts and the top register adds. That kind of thing can be useful with uh, division and things like that. But what's actually quite fun with this machine is how easy it is to uh, disassemble, or at least open up. I'll uh, show you this. You can slide this to the right, switch this little stopper out, and then the whole carriage slides right out. I'll do that for this one as well. Let me just slide it to the right a bit. There we go. And this uh, this handle comes off as well. And there are these four small uh, locking uh, switches here. The one on the bottom right is actually missing on mine. And now I can take off this front. There are several uh, uh, serial numbers here. On the front here you see 2014. That's that's a shared number that's on all the parts. There's a 2014 here. There's a 2014, uh, let's see, right there. And there's a 2014 whoop, right there. That's the shared serial number between the various parts, but each of these Parts also has its own serial number. There's a five digit serial number uh, right here. And also on the edge of these carriages. Those five digit numbers are all different though. Nevertheless, the numbers are all pretty low and I think that may, means that this machine was made in around 1912. Now you can see the whole mechanism. If you, uh, if you look just through this gap you can see the first stepped drum and let's just Move in a bit, if you can see that. There we go. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see, it's rather, rather dark. But, uh, yeah, the, the lever, the input lever, slider, it shifts a little cog uh, along the step drum that's just behind it. So when it's at four, it's at such a height that it, it interacts with four of the, uh, uh, the teeth on the stepped drum. And uh, yeah, depending on the, the position, 
it interacts with more or less of those those ridges, those teeth on the drum. Um, you can also see the carriage, the carry mechanism here. If I uh, if I click this down, you'll see that after a bit, one of the uh, pointy tooth on that, that uh, arm causes the next one to click one step further. Let me do that one more time. Because pushing this down causes that uh, tooth to shift into the, the way of this uh, cog there. If you don't push that down, it's, it goes just underneath it here and doesn't interact. So if you turn it with, with input, the stepped drums uh, drive these axes, uh, axles, and uh, yeah, that causes the uh, digits to uh, yeah to move. The lever here, you see what that does. That shifts all these uh, cogs, all these gears, up or down. The registers have uh, wheels and so uh, they can be reached on this side or on this side. So when you have uh, two wheels like this and this axle drives uh, clockwise then either it and it interacts with uh, with a machine with a output register on, on one, one end or on the other end. So now it, it drives at this end causing the, the wheel to move clockwise and now it drives it at the other end causing it to move anti-clockwise. And on the left here you see a bell and that gets rung if there's a carry on the topmost position. And let me just shift the subtraction levers apart. Now these two do the opposite. When one moves up, the other moves down. So it's quite fun to see how the, uh, the, the action on each of these axles is uh, done in sequence, so it's, it moves like a kind of a wave along. And that's, the reason for that is that you need the carries to be able to go from the lowest number all the way to the highest. You know, if you have 999 in the register, you want, if, if the last, the first digit increases, it has to have the carry to the next and so on to the next. So all the action has to go from right to left. And yeah, you'll also see that if you, uh, if you have a carry, it occurs immediately uh, the next step after all the, yeah, the input digit has been added. The next step is immediately that carry at times exactly directly after it. Yeah, so that's the uh, Unitas calculator by Ludwig Spitz & Co. Thank you for watching.